Hi, Muji. Hi. Thank you for answering my question. Thank you. And um, actually, there was a question yesterday that a young woman asked about um, working with sexual assault victims and and you gave a thank you for your answer and thank you for that question because I had the same here kind of, here uh, at Barmouth. Nick okay, Eden. what happened? Is someone came and it was a question about when you work with people who are suffering, like with sexual assault. I victims. see. Yes, 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 yes. And um, and I, I had the same question kind of, so it was really nice. And um, but I have some follow up questions <laughs> to that. Uh, so in my in my work. Uh, I'm a doctor and I work uh, in psychiatry mm -hmm. and um, I find myself very much invested in um, pe people suffering and and I become very like I try to remember this is God's play and karma but I become very angry angry yeah. and I, I'll even say I'll even joke with my family like I, I, I hate God right now that there's too much suffering. And then I find myself unable to just resolve that conflict mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of trying to think this is God's play. Yeah. yeah. I just, I, why am I so invested in believing that that suffering is real or? Yeah. I am liking this question because for many people, uh, they either they don't believe in God or something because they think, how oh, can God allow the world to be like this? You know, it's horrible. And uh, who? I mean, I could do a better job. <laughs> yeah. I would go around and I would change all these things, and you know, and you give me just give me three days and I'll fix <laughs> what he made in seven days. I fix in three days. I do if I had his power, I don't know. Hmm? and uh, and we we understand this kind of human frustration because we are taking the life very personally, also. And you think, but how should we not take personally? And I can see where you are connecting with that questioner from yesterday. And I don't know how many of you were at Pamat Nikitan. It was an important question, actually. And we can see if we can bring a little, bring it back in line a little bit, because some questioner come and she said. Um, I have a passion, and my passion was, is for helping like uh, abused women, I think it was something like this, you know? But we can also substitute that for whatever your passion is. In her case, it was like to help, to serve, and to maybe uh, restore a little bit some of, the, some of what was missing and, and some healing amongst uh, abused women, okay? Trouble is that I also have a strong uh, attraction for meditation. Are you here, by the way, the one who came? I was talking. Are you here, the one? Okay, because it was better. You are there, no? Aha, good, good, good. You are there, you know? So come forward as well, too, and let's have a look at it, because I felt it was an important question. You said yesterday that you had a strong passion for helping. Uh, abuse women, but you also have an inclination for uh, meditation, and then you find that when you meditate, uh, what happened was somehow the the, the the passion become lighter or weaker. Could you speak as well too? You both stay there, please, because I'd like to address both of you. Mm -hmm. What if what I find is that when I um, come to satsang or I meditate yes. or I have the day in slow motion. Yes. I feel that the the space where action is coming from is very clear. There is a very intuitive action. Yes. When I get into a very deep pain, which is here in the society, in the Indian society, is a big trouble. Which so, so when you are, say, at work, in your work environment, when you're actually in the place where you, as a doctor, have to work with your psychiatric uh, work, and where you have to work with, say, for instance, uh, abused women, you found that there's a strong demand. Is that, is that a, a phone ring or what, or a radio station? Okay. Um, so we, we have a, when you are in the work, 
it takes a lot of mental, uh, has a lot of mental demands. Also, is, is that so? You know, what, what happened after the talk yesterday is when the pictures came up of the rape victims, I was watching, I was watching the viewer who was watching it. Yes. And it, is, it needs a lot more concentration to go into that depth of pain to be in the watcher still. It's like another practice than just sitting on my own and meditating or sitting in satsang. It's much easier for me to, to feel that flow. Yes, you know. but, when, but in work, uh, you're not able to maintain that kind of composure, you would say, of your meditative state? Yes, especially when the suffering is very, very strong. I cannot keep the viewers. There, there is points where I'm losing it. Yes. Yes. So, what tends to happen, the more personal you become, the more personal you become, the more intense your pain will be. You start to see, well, I mean, this is just too much. Why do people have to suffer this every day? Why doesn't uh, the divinity come and help and so on? So, this is a personal, you see? When you're in your meditation, Again, you're clear and so on. You don't feel such a weight, such a pull. But then, then, the mind itself comes and say this thing. But I don't know what to do because if I go into meditation, I won't feel the passion I feel when I'm looking at it personally. Some people say like this, you know. And I feel I don't want to lose this passion because, you know, I really believe that you know it needs me and it needs people to really focus here. But when I'm in my uh, contemplative state, when I'm in the state of uh, the self, it do, there's more distance, and I don't know if I'm as effective as when I'm passionate. You see, and that is the point we reached. And many people still, I want to bring this as broad as we can, because you may find that you're saying. I can't realize the self, and there is a but and a because. Because something is holding on to, a certain passion you have about something that you feel that if I let go of this passion, I don't know if I want to do that in exchange for the realization of the self. Because I really believe in my passion. I really believe that you know, it is also God who is using me to help these people and to do these things. And that if I come into my meditation, then maybe I just become selfish and I'm not as efficient. And I say, that is not true. That is not true. Because they are not cancelling each other out. It's a question of priority. In one, you have to stay as a person. And the person is, you're going to be there trying, trying. Also, one man, he came to satsang um, uh, to see me in Portugal. And he said to me, I used to be a healer for 16 years. I'm working as a healer. But I, st I discovered your satsangs on the internet, and I stopped this work. I said, oh my God, one less healer in the world that needs all the healing it can get. Is Muji doing the right thing? I didn't do anything at all. He said, I'm not doing this healing, because when I've been doing this, I find that the people, they just always are coming to me for healing. Then they want me to heal the husband, I want me to heal the cat, they want me to heal the tree, I want me to heal everything. They just get so healing concentrated, and always it's like you get into a kind of healing mode like this. And I find that um, I'm giving all this energy, sort of energy, and they don't want to do anything. They just want you to come and heal. Just heal. They heal, you know? They don't, if you could, if, if I could breathe for them, they'd be quite happy. Yeah, 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 breathe for me as well, too. You know, it's like that. And I said, my God. And what happened? They are also keeping up. They're keeping up this because they have an investment in needing to be healed all the time. I'm not speaking specifically here about you. I'm just saying. And he said, I realized that I had really um, turned away from my family and my young child and so on, and putting all this energy. And something changed that. I stopped this work. And I'm much more happy now and uh, somehow the healing could still happen, but it's not my work, 
in the same way. Now, some people may say, but I'm not sure if that's a good thing. I'm not sure if it's a good thing. You must find that thing for yourself. You must find that thing for yourself to look. Because also, I am from also a country where many times people come in Jamaica, in a country, and they see people living in places that I see also in India, with just uh, some plastic uh, sheets over a space, and they're living, and people, oh my God, oh, poor people, and I wish I, you know, I want to come, and I want to build them a good house, and I want to do this, and I want to do that. And they try it, and they see, wait, it's not so simple. Not so simple. I build your house, then you want one for your cousin. And then this, then you want this, and you find that there's some other, there's another dimension of what is happening here, and it's not just a question of me feeling, oh, I can't bear it because I could not live in a house like that, or something. So it's not just one reading; a whole matrix of things are happening there. And it's not that these people are being punished necessarily. Sometimes they are happier than you, who is suffering. You sometimes suffer more on behalf of the people than they are actually suffering for themselves because of your own imagination. This is all part of life too. Now, I'm not telling you that you must not do this work. I'm saying maybe, of course, continue to do your work. But prioritize your meditation also. Not meditation like the meditation is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. It's my life hobby or whatever. No, but meditation in the form of like inquiry to really get to, to your true place. Getting to your true place, meaning that you could then actually find that your consciousness has become so panoramic, so broad, that you are not only helping abused women, but you may be helping their abusers also. You understand? Or we don't know. I am not making a promise, okay, if you do this, this will happen. I'm just saying that you are becoming from person to presence. And not because you are more effective, but because that is the, that is the impulse of the heart to be in its completeness, to not be ruled by the mind. And your vision will change in some way, but it will be a healthy change. And uh, are you willing to take that risk? Because if you are saying, no, 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 I really believe in my job, I really believe in my outlook, you see? It's personal, but I've seen it with my eyes. I've seen what is happening in the world. And I've seen people who speak like this. And they need help themselves also. They sometimes need help themselves. A lot of help. Maybe more help than the people they're helping also. Sometimes, not always. Because, of course, there are people who come to play a role in this also, and their work, their work is genuine. And grace comes to facilitate that work. So I'm not being specific to any particular group. I'm just speaking because you came, and you came forward, and you, you, you really made a very strong point. And it was so strong that other people were kind of like, whoa, you know, it's like, that's really deep into my stuff. That's what's happening with me also, like that, you see. Now you've come also as a result of this question. You're saying, I'm a doctor, I'm working with patients in a psychiatric um, discipline, but I'm finding that sometimes I'm just saying, you know, like, uh, playfully, I curse God, you know, because like, what? You know, what is what's going on like this, no? Yeah? And can you effectively uh, be in service to such an extent that your healing, the hell, your work is creating a lot of healing, but at such a slow rate that it's frustrating for you or something like this? I feel like sometimes like a fraud, like a fake. Yes, why? <laughs> because um, the it's, it's it's what I'm suggesting feels superficial or just doesn't it doesn't hit home for yes. people and yes. I feel like I want to say something else, but... Yes. Uh, you want to sometimes say something else? Yeah, I want to but you are reach, limited. reach people in a different kind of way. Yes. And sometimes it happens that way. Yes. Um, but most of the times, I feel like... Like, when we talk about the actor on a stage, I feel like that, but it's in a useless way, like, kind of... Okay. Because some disciplines inhibit you. Some disciplines can also inhibit your intuitive power 
to say, no, don't go with that. Stay within the, the path and administer like this. Some disciplines can do that. But if you're not saying it's a discipline, it's something I would say to you that it would be encouragement from me to say, really use this time in satsang to complete your sadhana, to, to really be there, because you will be much more effective in your awakened state. Hmm? The only thing is that in your awakened state, from now you may feel that, but I don't know if I am awakened, if I would even want to do this job even. You don't know. Because then it's not up to the person. It's not the person's work anymore. It is the cosmos' energy. And it may be in the same place, and it may point something. You see? This is a... Uh, and that's point. actually, that's, it's funny that you say that, because I <laughs> find myself saying, I just want to quit. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. It's not... Do you feel you'll be letting down your patients if you quit? I do, yeah. I do, and then I feel conflicted but about that. But then if you feel that you're letting down your patients if you quit, and then when you're working, you feel you're not doing them any good. What, what is that thing? <laughs> I, some, sometimes, and, and this is, um, some, with some patients, I feel effective. I feel uh, the message, we're speaking the same language, even though I'm speaking whatever medical terminology and et cetera. Um, but we're still, there, there's a heart connection there. It's just, uh, we're speaking the same language, and I feel effective. Uh, but many I don't. I would really encourage that whatever, um, I am not against any profession, you must do your profession. I believe that each of those professions could have an injection of people who are much more heart-centered and more true, you know, and have that move in that freedom, in that intuitive way also. You see? Um, I don't know if every discipline allows that freedom, you see? But uh, I have, I'd always will be saying to you, uh, realize yourself, yourself. Realize yourself. Um, uh, it's not only more doctors the world need, but awakened beings. That is the most powerful healing, that people can see uh, in a human form something that so inspires them that the inspiration begins to alter the way that they perceive life and change it in a such more radical way, and many more people actually, even. May, yeah? <laughs> and this, I'm not sure if this is too much of a mental question, but um, specifically with people who have like schizophrenia, I find myself um, really confused about how to engage or, I mean, I know medically how to engage and understand, but... Yeah. Uh, Yes, it's very difficult when you're coming from, if you're coming from the person to treat uh, someone with schizophrenic, uh, you see? Like, it's very difficult. You have to be coming from God. That is different. You have to be completely beyond your person, in a way. You have to be empty. You have to be empty. You cannot come with technique. Technique will be something past. It will not be appropriate. You'll, you'll overlook many things, you'll miss many things like that. But when you are coming somehow from that space where, you know, in a way your being is a, is a vehicle for this, not only a vehicle, but you are the vehicle and the source, in fact, of it. Yes. This we are talking about now, uh, a quality of being quality of being. So not that the voice is telling me and life is showing me, and then the me gets pulled out. Yeah? When the me gets pulled out, what is left? Is it death? When the me, the one who needs to listen and to move, you know? huh? yeah, okay, so maybe I should not go with this now. This is fine, it's good, it's fine. But I'm just now using this opportunity to look and say, this me must not just be one who listens, must be separate from the, that which speaks. You be that in which 
the speaking and the listening happens. You are one, one totality. Now, you don't have to put things in any compartment here, because it's more a sense of beingness. It's that beingness. And so you allow a space of emptiness also. Not that something is speaking to an entity, receiving and doing, but more in a space now, it's empty of personhood, empty of intention, huh? then you can fully, you see, imbibe uh, somehow, no? It's like you're much more intuitive, there's no delay, there's no wrong signal because you misinterpret, there's no place for so much interpreting, you see? You're more somehow, you're all of it. When we said, very often, we want to taste the honey, you don't want to be the honey, you see? Because we love experiencing, we love, mm -hmm. Mm, it's nice. What about this one? No, no, no. You want to taste the honey, you don't want to be the honey. But here, you are having both. You are tasting the honey of life, and you are also the honey. You are the life. You are tasting the life, you are the life, and you are also the weakness of this life. It is not three separate roles you are playing, and how do you balance them? This is different. You don't know anything at all, actually. You don't know. And people ask you, but how do you do? You say, well, I, it doesn't come from how do you do. You may not be eloquent to explain anything, but you'll be effective. Not at saying, okay, I want to do this and it gets done. Just you are. And this I amness becomes enough. Not, I am doing very well, and I want to expand my group. No, not this, just the I am. It's not like the sun. It doesn't say, oh, I really feel tired today, I don't think I'll radiate so much heat today. You know? It doesn't say, oh, I like shining on daffodils, but I hate shining on poo, or something like this, no? Because a complete waste of my heat. No, everything gets bathed in its light, its warmth, its radiance. Something like this is like that. You're not picking and choosing who will receive my grace, who will receive my energy. You see? It goes to, to anyone and whoever can take it. It's a very different thing than when you contain and remain as a person doing something, receiving blessing and passing it on. You see? You are the blessing. You are that, you are the giving and the receiving also. And yet you have this sense of a relationship with the higher power. You have this reverence for the higher power. But you are moving also as a, as a unitive being. Like each one is like a seed. And each seed has the power of completeness inside it. And it is being fed from inside and from outside because it is one work, or one, you see? And so the tendency to think, I am important, because if I am not here, this will not be done, these things, they slide away. Like Christ say, Jesus says, while I am in the world, I am the light of this world. While I am in the world, I am the light of this world. It's not an arrogant statement. Hmm? He didn't say, while I'm in the world, I will shine the light on the world. I like this part, Ashen. Yeah? He says, I am the light. The light does not choose what to light. It lights everything. It is so abundant. Are we so available? Or do we want to just support your favorite charity? It is also good, it's fine also. Hmm? Just one thing, I point you to your natural universality. Hmm? If you want only so much truth, it will take some practice and it will take some, some you know, determination. It will take time. But if you want all the truth, it will take you no time.
enough